Listen, I have a very important announcement. I need you to go onto our social medias right now. Go follow us, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, everything. Our channel on YouTube, subscribe to it. If you get the show, then I need you to get the show. Go do all those things right now. I will introduce you in a second. Give me just a moment. So the most famous Catherine ever spells the name that way, Tim. <laughs> right. Well, if you want to get technical, it comes from the Greek word catharsis, which is spelled with a K and two A's. Ah, let's do this. Duh. One of your favorites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Hayhoe is with us, and we will get to her in just a second. But before we get to her, because you may be wondering to yourself, uh, why is it that we keep doing this climate change stuff? Uh, there are reasons. Uh, it's not just to make you sad in the middle of the silliness that we do here. Uh, but Because we're all going to die! Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and I think it should be a bigger story. But before we do that, uh, let's wish a happy 92nd birthday to William Shatner. A happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. 92%, yo. When he went into space, uh, he said this. It was moving, touching, and scaring. I had uh, the thought that going into space would be the ultimate catharsis of that connection I had been looking for between all living things, that being up there would be the next beautiful step to understanding the harmony of the universe. In the film Contact, when Jodie Foster's character goes to space and looks out into the heavens, she lets out an astonished whisper, they should have sent a poet. I had a different experience because I discovered that the beauty isn't out there, it's down here with all of us. Mm -hmm. Leaving that behind made my connection to our tiny planet even more profound. It was among the strongest feelings of grief I have ever encountered. The contrast between the vicious coldness of space and the warm nurturing of Earth below filled me with the overwhelming sadness. Every day we're confronted with the knowledge of further destruction of Earth at our hands, the extinction of animal species, of flora, of fauna, things that took five billion years to evolve, and suddenly we will never see them again because of the interference of mankind. It filled me with dread. My trip to space was supposed to be a celebration. Instead, it felt like a funeral. The final frontier. Sounds like they did send a poet. He was very good on the subject, and the reason I wanted to talk to her is because she's an expert, and the United States, uh, the United Nations released another major report here, and all scientists, the headlines are saying, like, do something now, or it's going to be too late. It's World Water Day, Stu Gods, and already rich people, rich people in Colorado are showering every three days, collecting rainwater to flush their toilets. Because we've got a water short shortage. So uh, she's the author of the book, Saving Us, A Climate Scientist's Case for Hope and Healing in a Divided World. And thank you for joining us, Catherine. I ask you this. What's the simplest way you can explain our ignorance about a warming planet? Well, it's because it's never happened before like this. We humans have never conducted an unprecedented experiment with our home like this experiment that we're conducting right now. And so it's really hard just to wrap our minds around the fact that, sure, we've got 8 billion people, but we, through digging up and burning coal and gas and oil, are producing so many heat trapping gases that they're wrapping around the planet like an extra blanket, causing the planet to warm faster and faster. It's really hard just to wrap our minds around the scale of the problem. Why aren't we talking about it better or more? Why isn't the media covering this better and in a more alarming fashion? Great question. And in fact, the answer to your question is in the way you phrased it. So the media has been covering this in terms of the polar bears, the ice sheets, the rising sea levels, the alarming catastrophic headlines. But you know what? If we don't know what to do about it, our human defense mechanism is to do nothing. And so when we talk about this issue as if it's far away from what matters to our lives, and when we don't know what we can do to change something like an ice sheet or polar bear extinction, we do nothing. And that's exactly where we are today. If we continue to do nothing, how long do we have? Well, what's at stake is not the planet. The planet is going to be orbiting the sun long after we're gone. What's at stake is human civilization and many of the living beings that share this planet with us. That's what's at stake. And so that means that whoever we are, wherever we live, whatever we care about, as long as we love someone, something, or somewhere, we have every reason we need to care about climate change and to advocate for climate action. So the Jets, if they're going to do it, they have to do it this year, it seems like, right? 
<laughs> well, you know, climate change is even affecting sports. Yeah. It's affecting outdoor activities. It's affecting tennis and football and baseball and skiing, of course, too. Jeez. It's affecting every aspect of our lives and pretty much everything we love. What do you say to the person listening to this who says, oh, shut up about climate change. The world is always evolving. You're a kook. You're an alarmist. You're a fear monger. All the stuff that scientists get all the time. And I read a story in The Guardian I, that just bothered me. Scientists are afraid to tell us this. They're like being all cautious. They're like sticking the toe in the water of, hey, can you please hear us on this? Because they don't want to be shouted out of a room with things that people don't want to hear because it makes you feel hopeless and dreadful. Well, it sounds like you've been reading my Twitter feed because that's exactly, I've gotten thousands of comments the last 48 hours saying exactly that. I'm an idiot. I'm just doing it for the money. It's not true. And the reality is we've known since the 1800s that digging up and burning coal and gas and oil are producing heat trapping gases. We've been measuring since the 1930s how fast the planet is warming. We know that according to natural factors, we should be getting very, very slowly cooler right now, but instead we're warming faster and faster. But here's the problem. We don't want to fix it because we've been told incorrectly that the cure is worse than the disease. The reality is the exact opposite. If we can invest in clean energy, if we can be more efficient with our food and our energy, if we can invest in nature to help us out, there are so many things we can do that will clean up our air, clean up our water, improve the availability of food and water for people who need it, give us better lives. Oh, and they'll fix climate change too. Once we start to know what the solutions are, the only question is, what are we waiting for? Why do you think that is as far as describing the solutions in more tangible terms? Why, is, why doesn't that occur? Well, first of all, like you just alluded to, a lot of the headlines in the media are just about how bad it is. And believe me, it is bad. Those headlines are accurate. But you can't talk about something without talking about a solution if you want people to fix it. The other challenge we have is that there are forces arrayed against climate action. So climate science is well over 100 years old. It goes back to the 1850s, so like 170 years old. Climate denial is about 30 years old. When did climate denial begin? It began when people realized, hey, this problem is actually happening. It means that we need to wean ourselves off fossil fuels. That's when the denial organizations swung into action to deliberately muddy the waters, to deliberately tell us false information, and to deliberately act as if climate solutions are the worst possible thing, whereas in fact, they bring all kinds of benefits to us and improve our lives. Doctor, I did a poor job of establishing your credentials off the top because I was too busy with Star Trek stuff. But when <laughs> I say you're the chief scientist for the Nature Conservancy, can you explain to the audience, please, what your credentials are so that they understand that you're not just running around screaming into a megaphone because you're not actually worried about what we're doing to the Earth? I am very worried, and that's why I'm a climate scientist. So I originally started off studying astrophysics. That was my plan. I was going to be studying galaxies, so right along the lines of, of William Shatner. But when I took a class on climate change, I found out that climate change is not only an environmental issue. I had always thought of it as an environmental issue that, you know, environmentalists will take care of and the rest of us will watch their documentaries and support them and wish them well. I found out that climate change affects every aspect of our lives. It affects our food, our water, our health, our economy, our infrastructure, and most importantly, it affects the poorest and most marginalized people right here in the US as well as on the other side of the world. And for myself personally, as a Christian, I believe that we're supposed to care for other people, not add to their suffering. And so that's why I became a climate scientist. So I have a master's and a PhD in atmospheric science. I am a professor at Texas Tech University and I'm chief scientist for the Nature Conservancy, which is a huge conservation organization that's tackling the twin biodiversity and climate crises, because we got two of them. And we work in 81 countries in the world trying to protect the land and the water on which all living things, including us humans, depend. Bona fides. Yep, Red Raider, too. What's <laughs> happened recently that has you the most concerned? What story have you looked at the last, I don't know, six months or so that has you the most concerned? 
I'm most concerned about the fact that the science is very clear that if we develop new oil and gas resources, we're going to blow past our climate targets in record time. And around the world, people are continuing to do that. And in fact, last year, the biggest oil and gas companies in the world, BP, Shell, and Aramco, they made record profits and fossil fuel subsidies. That's right. We subsidize fossil fuels. Fossil fuel subsidies increased from $11 billion, sorry, $11 million US per minute globally last year year to $16 million per minute globally this year. So fossil fuel subsidies and development are moving in the opposite direction from where the science says they have to be moving if we're going to tackle climate. And your real-time reaction to learning that Biden allows Alaskan drilling after saying he was not going to allow that? It's just not consistent with what we have to do. Every little bit of warming matters. That's what the science says. Everything we do matters, and that both gives us hope in that our actions make a difference, but it also shows us that decisions like that carry a price tag for all of us. Doctor, which country does it the best? The best country is actually carbon negative. Bhutan has planted so many trees that they are taking more carbon out of the atmosphere than they produce. Can you tell us on the top of the list, doctor, when you think about the things that keep you up at night with fear, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, ice, ice melting or sea level change or fights for water and food uh, desperation, what's at the top of the list? Well, for me as a scientist, what keeps me up at night is the fact that this is an unprecedented experiment we're conducting with our home. And there could be all kinds of side effects that we don't even know about yet in terms of massive releases of methane, which is a powerful heat trapping gas from the Arctic or changes in water availability in places that are already short of water. And again, they are going to affect all of us but they're going to affect those who have the least, the most. And the 50% poorest people in the world, you know how much of this problem they're responsible for? 7%. It just is not fair. Doctor, it's not going to get anybody's attention until it starts affecting rich people. Like, yeah, have, that's it, true. I mean, it, it just, you, you can't have in Pakistan uh, brown people drowning in water and get Americans to care. Well, that's why a lot of the work I do is focusing right here, explaining to people, I mean, I live in Texas, and Texas is actually the most vulnerable state in the U.S. to climate impacts because our hurricanes are getting stronger, our heavy rainfall is getting more frequent, our heat waves are getting so intense, and we're seeing this all around the U.S. and around the world. When we figure out what's happening where we live... I like to call it not global warming, but global weirding. When we figure out that we're being affected, our house is being affected, our family is being affected, you're right. That's when the rubber hits the road. Doctor, thank you for being on with us. Your expertise is profound. Uh, we appreciate it, even though it is gloomy. Thank you for having me. And I have to say, we do find hope. And where do we find hope? We find it in action. And action is all around us. It really is. Thank you, doctor. I don't have any idea what this looks like, but Amin just revealed to me that he crashed his first wedding. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, <laughs> at Lebetard Show. Have you ever crashed a wedding, yes or no? He didn't crash your wedding? No. I was an invited guest, sir. Showed up late, but not as late as Stugatz. Did you crash your second wedding, too? You made it sound like it was his own wedding, Dan. Oh, is that what it sounded like? Yeah. I didn't get it. My fault. Crash, neither did I. Crash a <laughs> wedding. What is the backstory there? Uh, yeah, I. my buddy John Budish was in town in Phoenix for a wedding. Uh, for a, a, JB. Yeah, shout out to Bootsy. <laughs> John Budish. Buddha. He's a man. But uh, he was How does there. everyone know this person? Nobody knows Everybody him. knows yeah, Everyone him. knows no, He's my boy. He's my boy. <laughs> Come on. He's yeah. my guy. So, uh, so it was the wedding of Ty, Ty Shub, and Ty is a huge fan of the show, which I discovered, and a lot of other people are fan of the show. You know who they asked me about? Stanzik. Really? Yeah. I'm like, oh, That's yeah. odd. <laughs> it is odd, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, 
John told me, hey, man, come, come through. Come through. I'm like, I, I'm in sweats. He's like, ah, nobody, it's fine. Nobody does an... I've been un- asking about Stancic too since n- yesterday's news. Is Stancic the new EP? Nobody does an uninteresting detour like Amin. It's the strangest Wait a thing. Second. Oh, Billy Gill would like a word. It's an important <laughs> detail, yes. Several Greg words. Greg Cody would like a word. <laughs> I love Greg Cody's though. Greg Cody is the champ of that. <laughs> You were saying before we got stuck on you needing to tell us about Dan Stanza. I don't. I mean, just isn't that a weird name? It's an important detail. Like, yes, if you, thank go, you. If you crash a yes. wedding and yeah. to have a conversation about Dan Stanza is kind of is a little out there. Yeah. But anyway, I went there and it was like John's like, I ah, just go ahead, just just the, walk. the the original producer of Stupidity, correct? I <laughs> yes. think we should probably tell people that <laughs> as opposed to thank the, you. The, I was lost. Yes, I might Dan. As opposed to the it's an- a mean story, I anonymous mean, yeah. Buddha. I understand, but we do this publicly for an audience, yeah. <laughs> and I'd like the audience to not be left out because three of us are talking about Dan Stanzi. Well, Juju Gotti had a diss record about him too. Oh, that's true. That's oh, right. yeah, yeah, Stanzi. Oh, run that one back. Uh, but anyway, so my guy Bootsy says, "Yeah, man, just just go to the bar." I'm like, "I'm not gonna walk into a a wedding." At an open bar in sweats and just like, oh, yeah, I'll have your finest in, in McAllen's or whatever. He's like, no, no, it's fine. So I said, come walk with me so it doesn't look so obvious. And so I walk up there and I get ready to order. And the brother of the groom comes up and I got to do 15 minutes of show for the guy. So we start talking about the Ravens, what they're going to do. And oh, it, it was it was quite the time. You know what? Crashing weddings, not quite as scary as I thought it would be. I'm going to try and do some more. Mm. Well, you're going in as a celebrity, though. It helps to be known. <laughs> I mean, Dan, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> to learn more about Dan Stancic, check out uh, the 2020 album Dark Nights by one Juju Gotti. It's track four. <laughs> what did you give him on the Ravens, just out of curiosity? Oh, I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, sit this one out for a second. Tony and Stugatz have been dying to talk, okay, uh, for all week. They just want to get to a microphone and talk free agency, just any little bit of football. Uh, they want to do the Stonies. Uh, Stugatz and Tony team up to just uh, geek out on uh, Gasecki's going to the Patriots on a one year deal. Oh, Dan, watch out. No, it's been, list. it's been like every morning for the last week, Tony's been like, yeah, some interesting stuff's going on in the NFL, and then everyone steamrolls yes, past. we don't want to talk about, about yeah. it, but just Me go. Still only talk just about it. go. And, 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 going to the Panthers. Oh, I know. Mike, Listen, watch out. Things are starting to list. happen. I know. It's unbelievable. The move before the move. <laughs> Aaron, not a jet yet. I mean. He intends, though. He's got good intentions. <laughs> yeah. Let's, Dude, do you want to start or you no, want me to start? let's <laughs> spin the wheel of topics. Uh, oh, we, oh, steamroll. Jesus. Sean well, Penny. But well, here's what's here's what's here's what's on the wheel though. Uh it's top five NBA finals moment. Wow. It's Rick Ross's Buffalo are bothering the neighbors. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is a sports plane being hit by lightning. It is Lamar Jackson. Right. It is Mad Dog re upping with first take. Mm-hmm. And it's the Stonings. Hmm. What and also Shrek raves, and John Wick. What wow. what landed on the wheel? It looks like top five NBA final moments. Oh, How about I'm that? so sorry you don't get to Jeez. do the Stonies. I was hoping we did. Still up there. I can't believe it. So equal chances landed on the wheel. The wheel landed on us, Dan. <laughs> this is this is in honor of uh, remembering uh, Willis Reed and one of the most famous moments in sports history. Because of course it happened in New York, and when it happens in New York, mm-hmm. it's the thing that's that's remembered. For Forever because no, we're not doing that. You're not gonna like yawn at one of the most impactful moments in NBA Finals history. You're not gonna yawn at that, Dan. You we'll, know, s- we'll see if it's in the top five. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's in the top five or not. I'm it's we're, one it's of in the most honor. impactful moments in NBA Finals history because it happened with the Knicks. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. And, it, and because it was only a moment, then he limped yeah. back to the locker room. Yeah. And we had two shots yeah, for the, the coming out and going back, that's that's what the moment's all about. It shows, you know, the guy's heart. It shows how badly he wanted it, you know? In defense of New York things happening and everyone saying it's a big deal, I used to be the person who'd be like, oh my God, I roll. I don't care. It happened in New York. That's like, who gives a shit? Until- and then I lived in New York and I realized this is... This city is so big. Holy shit. 
So many people live here. It is massive. It, the, there is a disproportionate amount of people that care about things that happen in New York to, you know, other cities. Yeah, I'm not one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it, like the myopia has bothered me the entire time I've lived here because New Yorkers tell me how great New York is. And then they Rich come down here. Mr. And we don't this go only there. happens in Miami. But we don't go there. Sound like you're from Cleveland We, we right don't now. go there. They right. come here. Well, the weather's and now nicer. More mm-hmm. of them are here than have ever been uh, mm-hmm. by leaps and bro- And they're ruining... Our traffic is shit because uh, of... Oh, it's my fault. Yeah, it's right. New York. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely, it's absolutely okay. New York. Yeah. Yeah. Housing Hour prices. That's mm-hmm. funny. Nobody drives like that in New York, so I don't know why they drive like that here. Willis Reed, is he in the top five, or is the na- is the list just named after him? Well, I believe Amin has a top five. I also have a top five oh, okay. as well. Yes. Dan's also from New Jersey. That's true. Uh, that's a good yeah, point. Born yeah. in Jersey City. Shout I'm one of those people. Shout out to Fairleigh Dickinson, by the way. Migrated. Your dad went to Fairly Dickinson. You guys That's dropped correct. the ball. This should have been our tournament, by the way. The show should have owned the tournament. Fairly Dickinson, Florida Atlantic, Miami. We should have owned this. Instead, what'd you guys do? You farted. You farted all over yourselves and fecal matter came out. That's why we're the steaming bag of shit with you at the center of it. That's exactly why. It's what it can't fault, really. I'm the center? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that was bad You're on the EP we just all learned together was the EP. Incidentally, I've seen. I've got reporters calling me about this, like Sports Business Journal. They're asking about the rumors, the murmurs, that Whittingham's only leaving to avoid his 12 grid of death punishments that he owes. <laughs> oh, wow. Like he, oh, wait, wow. he owes more than anybody around never, here. Never did that bathtub thing. How'd he play? <laughs> he's got to do this stuff. He's got to do this even though he's left, the, even, even though he's quitting him. There's a day of reckoning coming, Witty. Number five, whose no. list are we O-L-I. starting with? OLI. I got an OLI. You got an OLI? But there's no. two lists, is yes. it not? Yeah, we have two lists, but he has OLI. I do, right. not, I do not. Yes. So you're two different so two different sets of top five moments yeah. from the NBA finals. And but neither of you have answered. Is it named after Willis Reed? Is it the Willis Reed moments? It's Memorial? the Willis Reed top five NBA finals moments for me. Yes. Number five. O- no. OLI, I mean. Ray Allen, get those fucking ropes out of here. Doesn't make the top five. That's, that's OLI? The greatest that's right. shot oh my in finals God. history. Fuck you, Miami. <laughs> the greatest shot. This is a New York list here, baby. Okay, yeah. excellent. All right. I defy you to find five finals with the Knicks. Go. Uh, Actually, there are. <laughs> do you have, go back to the beginning of the time. Yes. Do you have more OLIs? The very no, that's, beginning. That's the only that's OLI. It. All right, Stugatz, number five. Number five, 92 NBA finals. Jordan, six threes against the Blazers. That's not a moment. It was a half. The, shrug, a moment. the yeah. shrug's a moment. The yeah. shrug is a moment when mm. he's like, I can't believe how good I am. All I do is make threes. I, I, aren't I amazing? Looking at Magic Johnson, yeah. Chewing gum. Cliff Robinson kind of feeling a little <laughs> deflated. <laughs> Number five, I mean, <laughs> Magic Johnson, junior, 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 skyhook. At that point, the Lakers had never beaten the Celtics in a playoff series. And Kareem was out at center, and he scored 40-something points. Well, no, that was, that, you're thinking about his rookie year. This junior, junior, skyhook was 85. So uh, he uh, they, actually Kareem was we wide all open. Agreed, on, super memorable. If Kareem, got it right. you know, Kareem was wide open on the play, and Magic this is at Boston Garden. He does the little, little hesitation baby dribble and the yeah. little junior sky hook. Yeah, and that was the first time the Lakers ever beat the Celtics. Number four, Stugat. Ninety-one Finals. Jordan layup against the oh. Lakers. Stugatz, see, this is why we should have done. I should have done my list all at once. Stugatz is going to be all you're Jordan. Really, the, the, the layup, uh, the layup you're, you're talking, where he switches hands. You're talking about, right? Yeah, it goes from like yeah. the foul line, has it in the right, see. goes up, goes under with his left, lays it in. It was beautiful. All while chewing gum. Yep, what? exactly. He didn't have to switch hands too. Had the right hand layup. Unnecessary. Yeah, had the right Showboat. hand layup there. Showboat mm-hmm. number four. I mean, LeBron blocks Andre Iguodala at the end of Game Seven. You're gonna have two from that game. Number three, flu game, 97. Number three, I mean. A spectacular move by Michael Jordan. That's how you describe that play. You got to do the Marv Albert boys. You can't just say, oh, yeah, the, when he went up with the thing. And he, no, no, no. A spectacular move by Michael Jordan. You say that, everyone knows what that is. Yeah, like, and there's a sale by Bird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I a sale by Bird. You got him out as like that. <laughs> You want to you want to break out more of your fake Johnny Most type? Uh, like, I'd love to hear from him on the uh, sensual towel wave. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I I'd love to talk later uh, in the show. Never getting a boner again. I would like to talk. They about, have stuff for that. I'm getting one right now. 
Johnny Most breaking down the Jalen Brown situation. Johnny Johnny Most, you doing an impersonation of Johnny yeah. Most, like, and at the center of it, having his racist core spill out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Boston racist core spill out. Where are we, Stugatz? Three or two for you? I think we're at uh, two, two for me, yeah. yeah. Number two. Dagger, Michael Jordan, 97 finals against Byron Russell. No pushing off. Number two. Number two, you got a better one than that. Mm. Number two, I mean... Willis Reed limps out in Game 7 uh, to win the Knicks' first title. Put him up 4 nothing. Yeah. I had no idea he only shot two shots the entire the game and two. left. I, I thought he had like 50. Uh, no, <laughs> he had four. <laughs> you know, this is how, guy had 50. You know, wow, Willis Reed. This is how nice he was. He played 50 seconds. <laughs> That's how big that moment was, Tony. He scored four points. Walt Clyde Frazier scored like 40 and had seven steals and 11 assists. No, no, one, remembers. Remembers. no one remembers. Yep. No, Willis Reed's He four set points. the tone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the 50 doesn't mean anymore. That's exactly. <laughs> I love a good tone setter. <laughs> Julius Randle scores 57 the other night. Nobody cares. They lost. They lost. Also, <laughs> win a title after the merger. Oh, wow. Uh, Number I, one, Stugatz. Ah, uh, damn. We all remember exactly where we were. 2011 NBA Finals when J.J. Barea own LeBron James in the oh, post. Jesus Christ. Not a Jordan one. Bit of a surprise. <laughs> Number one, I mean. Paul Pierce shat himself. <laughs> I mean, are you willing to report nationally with your credibility at stake? Because this is still a conversation. Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce were just talking about this. Paul Pierce continues to deny that he shit himself. Are you reporting with your credibility as a basketball analyst at stake? With your name on it, I know, sources, Paul Pierce definitively shit himself because he denies it. He went off in a wheelchair, was gone for six minutes, and still denies that he pooped himself. Yeah, it's funny because he was trying to say, hey, you know, nowadays guys sprain their MCL, they're out six to eight weeks. I, I I went in and came right back out, and I said, yeah, because you went and took a dump in there. But the thing that I don't get is why sit? Because in my mind, NBA players, they wear these uh, compression tights, right? So if you took a dump in your pants, it actually gets held within the compression due to the moisture wicking. So it wouldn't actually make its way to your shorts unless you sat down and I, well, mushed I, it I about. I appreciate the analysis. Yeah, are you great re- analysis. Are, are you reporting it, it, though? Are you reporting it as fact because he denies it? Mike Schur, do you know what the truth is here? I mean, Doc Rivers has told us that's the case. So did Scalabrini, didn't he? I don't think Scalabrini said that. Uh, Scal, he should have. White Mamba. Scalabrini is the one. Scalabrini is the one who said these these days. So like you sprain your MCL, you're out for six months. He was gone for six minutes. It wasn't that. That was Scal. That wasn't unless Pierce said it too. Pierce, I thought Pierce I thought said it with, Scal with, said on KG Certified or whatever the name of what the show is. What is true? <laughs> what to, what is true to Mike Schur? What's true to me is that that man is a legend, a Celtics legend. They won a championship. They won a title. And I don't care. I don't care one way or the other. And I and also what's true is I never want to hear a mean say the phrase moisture wicking again. <laughs> the <laughs> truth this is Mike Sure. I, I really enjoy your TV programs, especially the one with the colored fella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm da- I'm Come on. Racist Johnny Don't, Most. Do not turn Johnny Most into a racist. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to. <laughs> I, Johnny Most took care of that. Please, I would like, I would like Johnny Most, <laughs> the racist, to be a what character a, a means- <laughs> for the remainder of this segment. I don't want him Johnny to go Bob anywhere. I want him to be the next executive producer of this show. <laughs> Johnny Most? The racist. The racist, the, the Johnny, racist Johnny, Most. Johnny Most. What Johnny are we going to do with Johnny Stanzik, though. Not, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the stat of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day. It is the start of the day. (laughs) 
I'm very upset at you guys because I had I you didn't tell me it was Whittingham's last day, and I had a top five list to send him off into the great beyond. Well, he didn't tell us it was but his last his day. He also, didn't, he also didn't tell us he was the EP. His, and it's quitting him. His last yeah. day was actually Saturday, and he came in a couple of extra days. I well, don't... I said quitty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have that list now, or you no longer have that list? You wish to do it as a goodbye? I'm tired no, of his I, goodbye. I ha- I... We're all tired of his goodbye. I have the list if you want Enough the with the victory lap. Yeah, we'll get I have to it. You want to do it? It's top five <laughs> phrases that made me think of Chris Whittingham. Sure. All right. Do any OLIs? Nope. Real quick. Number five. Uh, here we go. Number number five, bona fides. <laughs> number four. Tertiary lads. <laughs> number three. Jim Gray sucks. <laughs> I think he said that. He said something like that. Well, he, he said did. he said he would never. Well, he said that, and that he wouldn't trade his own career for Jim Gray's. That he wouldn't leave his present I, job for Jim Gray's yeah. life. Number, what I remember is him saying Jim Gray sucks. He left it for Number soccer. Two. Number two. <laughs> no, Jessica. Let me tell you some stuff about childbirth. Ah, that, was a, <laughs> that was a day, wasn't it? <laughs> I learned a lot from Woody. Oh, man. Winningham, Mike, that is good. A, an expert on the cesarean section, Winningham. <laughs> was a, how do you have something better than that? Number one. It, it hit him in the penis. You got to go with that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I miss him. I hope he uses our show phrases. I hope he doesn't respect the cathedral. He respected the cathedral so much he quit. Uh, no, I, I, I hope he goes. He's sprinting away from is, show for reasons. Is he going to go on Apple and do that? Is he going to normalize the penis on Apple, or do you think he's going to run scared from it? He's going to run scared. He's he's going to he's he's going to chicken out. There's he, no way he says the word penis multiple times. Literally just ran MLS scared. <laughs> I, I just remembered that Dan sat here uh, yesterday or two days ago and announced that. The, the word for vagina that starts with a P is an anatomically correct. Term. I did do that. that yeah, that was that insane. <laughs> yes. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Insane. Wait, insane. Wait, Dan, there's nothing Thank wrong you. with that. No. We saw it in textbooks here in Miami. It's okay. No. So, uh, it happened? Yeah, the, the baby here. comes out of the pussy, right? <laughs> that's that's oh, cool. Then he took a drag from his cigarette from the back. <laughs> Little Miss Muffin. <laughs> Uh, Miracle of childbirth. (laughs) What is the stat of the day? (laughs) Yeah, that happened. It's hard hard to follow that. It's hard to follow that with with a with a boring stat of the day. Amazing. 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 Is it like I have a Latin origin? Oh my God! Oh, Pussimus Maximus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a James Bond character. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Pussimus Maximus. Why didn't that happen yesterday? <laughs> you your got- your suey for worst mistake oh. moment happened talking about. They sue you for worse mistake. And, hey, <laughs> and just like that, we got ourselves a horse race. <laughs> what is the stat of the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's got to be about Shohei Otani yeah. at the conclusion of the WBC. According to Sarah Langs, here are some stats for you from the WBC. Shohei Otani hit 435 with a 606 on base percentage and a 739 slugging percentage, four doubles a home run. He had also had a 186 ERA with 11 strikeouts and nine and two thirds innings. Got a save, but here's the real stat: he hit the hardest ball of the tournament, 118.7 miles an hour. He threw the hardest pitch of the tournament, 102 miles an hour, and he hit the longest home run of the tournament at 448 feet. And afterwards, he said that winning the WBC was the greatest moment of his life. We have to get that guy out of Anaheim. Please, somebody get that guy out of Anaheim so that he can save baseball. He threw 102 twice, by the way, last night. Mm -hmm. Passes right, by the way, is better than Babe Ruth. He's Uh, not. That that flew under the radar, but he passes totally right. I love Babe Ruth. He's a little, uh, there's something about him, though. I I can't put my finger on it. I don't know. (laughs) 
<laughs> you love half of him, right, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. uh. So he's half and half Italian. Okay. <laughs> Doc, I got to tell you, my pussy is killing me. <laughs> um. All right, scooch up. Let me see your <laughs> 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 I got my speculum right here. I'm going to put in your Hey, yo. <laughs> Might be cold. <laughs> Let me see that. <laughs> the problem with your pussy is you have to care for your pussy health. <laughs> Dirty Johnny Most. <laughs> Instead of racist. Oh, no, no, I got. Dirty, I, got I have more. I have more, racist I have more racist ones. I gotta get out of the way. <laughs> you know, I, oh, I, 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 the, the, there's something about Babe Ruth. There's a great quality pool by uh, <laughs> Burst, the deep cut. And Bird stole the ball, pass it to DJ, which, quite frankly, was a little, <laughs> little. I would have thought it the other way around, you know, given their proclivity for stealing things. <laughs> DJ stole the ball from Bird. He stole it. Did you see that? He stole it. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, Mike. We Kurt, Kurt oh, Rambis. I'm sorry. You've got more. I don't think <laughs> I, 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 I Kurt Rambis is the heart and soul of the Lakers. <laughs> you stop Rambis. You stop the Lakers. <laughs> Let me see that pussy. <laughs> That's, it's almost DMX. It's, it's getting into DMX now. Did you just spit okay. water on the floor? I did. A legitimate uh, I spit take for, for dirty, now, dirty Johnny Moe's. Dirty racist Mose. Johnny Moe's rapping lyrics to Party Up in Here by DMX. See you later, Mike. Bye. Yo, act, you twist it. Your girl's a hoe. <laughs> The kid ain't yours, and everybody knows. The old man says you're stupid. You be like, so? I love my baby mother. I never let her go. <laughs> and there's Mikhail on the boards. <laughs> uh.